Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Sammy Fryer, licensed realtor in the state of South Carolina. And today we're gonna to pick up where we left off with this video where we looked at Florence by quadrant and broke down the statistics of what buying a home in each area of Florence will look like in general. And as promised, we're gonna to start to drill down and look at Florence by neighborhood, but we're gonna start by quadrant. And so what we have today is I've compiled a list of 36 neighborhoods in West Florence, which we determined in this video is in general, the highest in area of Florence. Let's do a couple of housekeeping things before we get into the data. What you're gonna be looking at is some basic relative statistics that should be helpful for people that are shopping in our area, regardless of what area of the country you're watching this video from. All 36 of these neighborhoods are zoned in West Florence. And specifically by that, I mean West Florence High School. So I try to do it by school zoning. And we have five major categories of data that I think are the most relevant for people that are shopping to consider, which brings me to point number two. I tried to compile something that would be as accurate of a representation of our area as possible. And we do have that. I can tell you that this really does serve that purpose, but there is a notation that needs to be made beside that in that sample size matters. And so if you look to the column to the far left of the screen, when we pull the spreadsheet up, some neighborhoods only had a very small amount of houses that have either been sold or are active, which is what this data consists of over the last two years. And this data is only consisting of the last two years because I wanted to have a sample size that takes into account the market in relation to the increase in mortgage rates that we've seen over the last two years. So this data does not move back past May of last year. I'm, I'm sorry, the year before last. So some neighborhoods have a greater sample size than others. That's just something else you might want to consider when we're looking at this data. The next thing is I tried to weed out as much bad data as I could, but there are houses that I had to scroll through and remove because I'm seeing the address and I know that's not in that subdivision. And so in one case, there was a nearly million dollar home with an acre of land that was listed in a subdivision that it's actually not even really close to in terms of West Florence it's completely on the opposite side. It wasn't West Florence, but it's it, not in that subdivision by no means. I caught quite a few of those things where something wasn't accurate. I went through and removed all the expired listings, things that actually didn't sell. So that wouldn't throw the data off. That wouldn't be good data for us to calculate, but I can't guarantee that I caught everything. But with that being said, I can tell you for certainty that this does represent a really good picture and a true story of what, purchasing and moving into West Florence is going to look like for the most part. Last two things I'll say, this data does not include townhouses and condos. I left those off. And lastly, this list does not cover every single home or every single subdivision in West Florence. With 36 neighborhoods, we do have a really good view of the entire spectrum of West Florence. This isn't counting homes that aren't in subdivisions that are just listed city or county. And this video is already going to be long enough. It would have taken too much time to cover every single subdivision and housing area in West Florence. This really does give a good picture. And so hopefully it'll be helpful to you. And so I will say that if you find these videos helpful, if you found the Living in Florence video helpful, if you're watching this and you're considering moving to Florence and you find it helpful, not only please like the video, but leave a comment with any critique or ideas that you may have that could make this more beneficial. Is this overkill? I know that this is relevant data, so that should be helpful, but I'm not too big for advice and critique. As a matter of fact, I welcome it. So let me know down in the comments, what do you think? And with that being said, let's jump right into it and let's take a look at West Florence by neighborhood. Now I'm gonna move through these relatively quick. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. We're already eight minutes into footage and I haven't even started the video. So I'm going to just roll through these. I'm basically going to read off the data. I might throw in a couple of tidbits here and there. I'm not going to camp on any particular neighborhood for too long because much like you saw in this video, we are going to take a drill down look. The plan is at each one of these neighborhoods. And it's in those videos that we can get into more specifics about the geography, the surrounding amenities, the features of the neighborhood, the style of homes, that kind of thing. All right, so let's get into it. And I've ordered these by average price. So we're gonna start with the lowest average price and work our way up. With a sample size of eight homes, Mayfair, which is right off, what's well, really in between second loop and third loop, comes in at an average price of just over $120,000 with an average square foot of home at just over 1,300 square feet, paying an average price of $90.85 per square foot. The average lot size for the homes in Mayfair is just under three tenths of an acre. 
and the average year built 1968. Next on our list is Oak Forest. Oak Forest is going to be on the corner of Southboro and Pine Needles, right across the street from the Lambs Chapel Christian Center Church there. And the average price for those homes with a sample size of nine homes over the last two years is $162,412. The average square footage of these homes is a little bit smaller than Mayfair at $1,130. The average price per square foot, however, is $146.39. The average lot size is about the same as Mayfair at 0.25 of an acre. On average, these homes are about 20 years newer, coming in an average year built of 1986. Next on our list with only three homes, and like I said, that's relative because you don't have a great sample size. We've got Ridgecrest. Ridgecrest is going to be right by Delmay Elementary School. Coming in at an average price of almost $166,000 per home. These homes are a little bit larger still with an average square footage of just under 1,500 square feet at 1494 With an average price per square foot of $112.37, the average lot in this neighborhood is also a little bit larger at four-tenths of an acre. And hence the pricing, the average year built 1961. So if you're okay with an older home, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, you can get more home and a larger lot for a little bit cheaper considering the per square footage price than you would in a neighborhood like Oak Forest. Next on our list is Foxcroft. Foxcroft is right out by Hoffmeyer Road heading out towards Darlington with an average price per home of $183,532.50. The average square foot for these homes is 1,557 square feet, coming in at an average price per square foot of $131. The average lot size is going to be 0.23 tenths of an acre. The average year built, 1982. So again, if you're in that $150,000 to $200,000 range, it's about priorities. If you want a little bit bigger lot size, you may want to look into Ridgecrest. But if your preference is a little bit newer home, on average, the homes in Foxcroft are about 20 years newer. And next is Springdale. Five homes sampled, $186,860 average price of home. Average square footage for these homes, the largest so far on our list at $1,710. And the average price per square foot, $111.76 with an average lot size at just over three tenths of an acre. The average year built for these homes is 1969. Next is Old Quarter. So we're back over to the Southboro and Pine Needles side of town. And this will be our first neighborhood in the 200,000s, coming in at an average price of home of $212,475. The average square footage is 1,966 square feet with an average price per of $108.38. The average lot size is just over a quarter of an acre with an average year built of 1979. And that makes Old Quarter, not just in terms of location, but also price-wise, very similar to the Charters neighborhood, which is on Southboro Road, with an average price of home of $213,483.33. The average square footage is going to be a little bit smaller on these homes, 1,572 square feet. The average price per, $138.69. The average lot, about the same size at just under a quarter of an acre, but the average year built on the homes in this neighborhood is 1994. Hence the little bit higher pricing, meaning paying more money for a smaller home. These homes on average are built in the 90s. However, you're still shopping at the same price point if your pre-approval is around that $215,000 range. Next on our list is one of the older neighborhoods in Florence Botany Acres with an average price per home of $234,799.88 out of nine homes sampled. The average square footage of these homes is 1,737 square feet at an average price per square foot of $136.66. The average lot size in Botany Acres is 0.44 with the average year built in 1970. And as we talked about in that first video of this installment, the older the neighborhood As a rule, the larger the lot sizes are going to be. And next, right off Cashua is Parkland. The average home price in Parkland is $278,750. The average square footage of these homes is 2,413 square feet. With an average price per of $128.14, the average lot size, the largest on our list so far at 0.73 with an average year built of 1978. Next is Briarly. There's definitely going to need to be an asterisk besides this one because there's only one home on the list, and that home sold for $282,000. It was over 2,200 square feet, 120, almost $127 per square foot. 
just under half an acre on the lot, built in 1993. All right, our next neighborhood and the newest that we've come across so far is going to be Highgate. The average price of these homes over the last two years, $284,000. $200, the average square foot being 1,766 square feet with an average price per of $161.32 on an average lot size of two tenths of an acre. The reason for the higher price, this neighborhood has an average year built of 2016. All right, next on our list is a pretty much brand new neighborhood, Alligator West, hence its name down on Alligator Road. The average price of the homes in Alligator West is $292,867.31 with an average square footage of 2,130 square feet. The average price per square foot, $138.90 with an average lot size of 0.17 and an average year built of 2022, making this one of the more attractive neighborhoods currently in Florence, considering the price point for the newness of the homes. And as you can see, by far our largest sample size so far on the list, in fact, on the entire list, well, other than the Grove, which is actually a very similar neighborhood in a lot of respects. Next on our list is Oakdale, with a sample size of 33 homes Within the last two years, the average price being $297,000 plus $138.10. The average square foot in Oakdale being just over 2,200 square feet. Average price per square foot, $133.15. But with a lot size of over half an acre, the average year built for the homes in Oakdale is $1,989. And so again, for those of you who would like a little bit more property, Perhaps you want to have a garden, a little bit of space, a dog, something like that. Oakdale is definitely going to be another neighborhood that you may want to take a look at at that price point. Next on our list is Grove Park. So we're over on Hoffmeyer Road right behind the mall right now. The average price for a home in Grove Park is just over $308,000. The average square foot of those homes is 2,672 square feet. The average price per square foot being $130.43. And again, you can get an over half acre lot on average with the average year built for these homes being 1975. Next on our list is Hazelwood on Cashua. Only three homes sampled here. Take note of that. The average price being $321,667. The average square foot of those homes being just over 2,300 square feet. The average price per square foot, $140.80. The average lot size being 0.27. All right, next is the Grove, another pretty new neighborhood. So we're back on Pine Needles Road now, right by the King's Academy and ASIE Express. They're on the corner uh, where Ebenezer Park is at. The average price of these homes is $324,000. Average square foot of those homes being 2,265 square feet, coming in at an average price per of $146.76. The average lot size, just a hair over two tenths of an acre with an average year build of 2022. So very similar to Alligator West in a lot of respects. Uh, if you're looking in Alligator West at a home, you may also want to have your realtor show you anything that's in the Grove at Ebenezer also. Next is another fairly new neighborhood that is West Lakes. Down on 76, going towards Timminsville. Average home price in West Lakes is just over $327,000 with an average square foot of 3,008 square feet. The average price per square foot being $145 on the button. With an average lot size of 0.27, the average year built for this neighborhood is 2019. Now, some of the largest lots that you're gonna find, relatively large neighborhood at the end of Pine Needles is White Hall. The average price for these homes is $328,940 with an average square footage of 2,755 square feet. The average price per square foot being $120.88. An average lot size of one and a half acres plus with an average year built of 1973. So again, we see the 70s, larger lot sizes. And so you can get a little bit more home and a little bit more land for your money in Whitehall. And so again, that's why I think and I hope that these videos are helpful for those of you out there that are looking in the Florence area. By the time you actually get into the home shopping phase, you can kind of already have an idea of what neighborhoods and areas of town you're going to be interested in. And again, if your pre-approval is around $325,000, $345,000, these are the type of things that I know you guys are considering. You know, uh, what are my priorities? Land, how comfortable in terms of age of home, what size home? And so there's a big discrepancy in lot size. If you look at this group of homes right here, they're all around the same price, 
But look at the difference in these lot sizes. Now on to Wessex. And now we are on Ebenezer going out towards Lucas Street. Wessex is also a relatively new neighborhood. And the average price of those homes is just under $331,000 with an average square footage of just under 2,100 square feet. The average price per $158.27 on a lot that's 0.15 on average because these homes have an average year bill of 2021. So remember the newer the home, as a rule, the higher the price per square foot is going to be. Next is Via Toscana. Via Toscana with an average price of home at $335,000. The average square footage of these homes is just under 2,300 square feet with an average price per of $145.83. Same exact lot size on average as Wessex at 0.15. The average year build of these homes, 2016. This is also a relatively new neighborhood. This is the neighborhood with all the red roofs. And that neighborhood is right behind the food line on West Palmetto. Next is Kelly Farms. Asterisk beside this one. We only had two homes to look at. The average price of those two homes was $337,450. The average square footage being 2,562 square feet with an average price per square foot of $131.37. Average lot size, the second largest on our list at one and three tenths of an acre with an average year built again as expected in the 70s being 1979. So a little bit newer than Whitehall. Next on our list is Cypress Glen. Also down at the end of Pine Needles off of Whitehall Shores Road. With eight homes sampled, we have an average price of $357,000 with an average square foot for those homes being 2,684 square feet. The average price per square foot being $132.85. Average lot size, 0.35 with an average year built of 2000 Next is Forest Lake, which is right there at Forest Lake, of course. Average price for those homes, $372,000 with an average square foot of 2,888 square feet. The average price per square foot being $131.74. A little bit larger lot sizes with an average of just over six tenths of an acre and the average year built being 1983. Next on our list is Hampton Point, which we did shoot this video about. Out of 22 homes sampled, the average price of the homes in Hampton Point is $379,490 with an average square footage of 2,587 square feet, coming in at an average price per square foot of $145.77 per. On an average lot of just under half an acre, the average year built for the homes in Hampton Point is 1996. And just, I'll just take that as a moment to say, there are some great homes in some of these neighborhoods that we're looking at for sale right now. So if you'd like to schedule a showing or a virtual tour, all my contact information is down in the description. Reach out to me. I do virtual tours for out-of-state buyers all the time. All right, next is Wedgwood. Out of 26 homes sampled, the average price of the homes in this neighborhood are $397,485.54 with an average square foot of 2,505 square feet, average price per being $159.37. On an average lot size of just over three-tenths of an acre, the average year built for the homes in Wedgwood is 2013. Next is Monticello. Average price for the homes in Monticello is going to be $409,750. Average square foot of these homes is 2,744 square feet. Average price per square foot, $149.83. On an average lot size of 0.47, the average year built for the homes in Monticello is 2,000. Next is Live Oak, right at the intersection of Pine Needles and Southboro Road. Average price for the homes in Live Oak is $414,571. The average square foot for a home in Live Oak is going to be 2,752 square feet coming in at an average price per square foot of $151.28 on an average lot size of just a hair under four tenths of an acre. The average year built for these homes is 2011. All right, so making our way up to the most expensive homes in West Florence, next is going to be Ebenezer Chase. The next two neighborhoods only had three homes to sample. Keep that in mind. The average price for a home in Ebenezer Chase is over $400,000 at $417,500. The average square foot for these homes is $2,887. Average price per square foot, $144.39 on an average lot size of 0.42 with an average year built of 1993. Also with an average year built of 1993 on Cashua is going to be Mallard Point. The average home price in Mallard Point is $423,866.67 with an average square foot of 3,142 square feet costing an average price per of $134.88. The average lot size 
relatively large for our list at over six tenths, in between six and seven tenths of an acre. Next is Rutledge Manor. The average price for a home in Rutledge Manor, $429,816.67. The average square footage, very similar to that of Mallard Point, being 3,149 square feet. Also priced similar at $136.77 per square foot. Lots on average slightly smaller at 0.44 tenths of an acre with an average year bill of 1998. Next on our list is Vintage Place. Vintage Place down on Hoffmeyer Road going towards Darlington, right across the street from Lucy T. Davis and John W. Moore Middle School. Lucy T. Davis being the elementary school. Those two are next door. Average price of these homes is $434,000. The average square foot for the homes in Vintage Place is 3,041 square feet. At an average price per square foot of $142.90, the average lot size is just a hair under half an acre with an average year build of 2002. Really nice neighborhood. Fun fact, one of the first jobs I ever got sent on was to help with a family friend's crew in framing one of the houses in Vintage Place. Now, if you're looking in Vintage Place, don't worry. At 14, I really didn't do anything but hand tools to people. So I did not mess up a home in Vintage Place. Next is Forest Lake Shores. And we're really narrowing our list down with a sample size of 23 homes over the last two years. The average price being $481,217.26. The average square foot for these homes is 3,191 square feet at an average price per of $151.40. The average lot size is 0.43 tenths of an acre with an average year built of 2016. Really nice homes over in Forest Lake Shores. Next on our list is Westbrook. Westbrook is going to be the neighborhood that's on Trace's Golf Course down on Southboro Road going out towards I-20 with an average price of $510,277.19. The average square foot for these homes is 3,319 square feet with an average price per square foot of $155.25 on an average lot size of under just under eight-tenths of an acre. The average year built for the homes in Westbrook is 2004. Very similar neighborhood in comparison in a lot of respects and not on the golf course because some people are into that. Some aren't would be Forest Lake Point. The average price being not much more than Westbrook at $518,636. The average square footage a little bit larger on average. Less home sampled, however, at 34 at 3,488 square feet. The average price per being $148.57. Average lot size almost identical at 0.74 with an average year built of 2002. And now the top two neighborhoods for West Lawrence for our list are the two that are in the 600,000s. First is Kingsgate, a very new neighborhood. Again, just past the intersection of Ebenezer and Hoffmeyer going out towards Lucas Street. The average price for the homes in Kingsgate is $619,325.77. The average square foot for these homes is going to be 3,585 square feet with an average price per of $173.98, making it the most expensive neighborhood on our list currently with an average lot size of over four tenths of an acre. These homes are on average built in 2017. And last on our list or coming in at number one, however you want to look at it, is Windsor Forest. The average price for the homes in Windsor Forest is $660,630 even. The average square footage for these homes is 4,097 square feet at an average price per of $163.24. The average lot size just under six tenths of an acre. The average year built 2005, but I put these parentheses here because there is a wide spectrum of year built in Windsor Forest. And that's important to note in terms of the pricing. And just as an example of some of the diversity in this neighborhood, there is a home that just went on the market today. It's not calculated in this data. I'd already compiled this um, before that went on the market at over a million dollars. And of course, as we see, with an average of $660,630. And as a bonus, for those of you that thought I forgot, our true number one neighborhood in terms of median price in West Florence is going to be Lazar Place. Out of four homes sampled, sold and active, one currently active right now, and I'll tell you the price of that active home in just a second, we have an average home price of $1,224,500 with an average square footage of 6,635 and a quarter square feet. 
On an average lot size of just under an acre at nine tenths of an acre, the average price per square foot for a home in Lazar Place will cost you $172.49 with an average year bill of $19.98. And as for that house that is currently active, that one is currently listed at just under $2.7 million at $2,695,000. All right, so I know we just ran through some data, but I hope you guys find this helpful. The Living in Florence video has actually performed really well. Some of you guys have called me from different parts of the country uh, after watching that video that are looking to move to our area. And it's definitely been a pleasure to speak with and work with some of y'all. But my hope is that that's an inclination or a confirmation that these videos are helpful. So I know that people are moving to South Carolina from all over the country. I've worked with quite a few of you and am working with some of you currently. And I know that we're searching YouTube to get our information and data these days. We're looking on the internet, specifically YouTube though and Google. And these videos will pop up and hopefully provide you with insights and helpful information that help you in your decision making that kind of give you some guidance along in your process. Now, of course, we can drill way down into the weeds. And I do plan to do videos looking at, like I said, no joke, each one of these neighborhoods in detail. It's going to take some time, but I think if we could put together a comprehensive playlist on this channel of showing you our entire area, you can shop right from the comfort of your home. Now, at some point, most of you, 93% of you, according to the National Association of Realtors are going to call a real estate agent. And I would definitely encourage you to call a realtor to work with you and help you through your transaction, especially if you're a buyer. And I would absolutely love to work with you guys. We can certainly get down into the details and find specifically what you're looking for. But hopefully these videos gave you some insight to kind of lay some groundwork and have some direction before you ever even made that phone call. That's the purpose. If you find them helpful, please give a like to the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends and family. It really helps us out a lot and we appreciate it. And if you are looking in the Florence area and would like some more information as you're considering your move, all of my contact information is down in the description. We can set up a complimentary buyer's consultation to get to work on your move today. And likewise, if you're a seller, this information is relative for sellers. It gives you a ballpark range of where you're sitting at. You can kind of compare your home with this data and get a pretty good idea of what you're looking at. And so likewise, if you would like to set up a complimentary home valuation, or if you'd like to schedule a listing presentation and see what we bring to the table as listing agents in Florence and in the surrounding area, then again, all my contact information is down in the description. I would love to hear from you and we can get to work on your sale today. And so with that being said, I wish y'all nothing but the best in your real estate endeavors. I look forward to hearing from you. And in the meantime, y'all take care and we'll see you on the next one.